Hey, in this video I'm gonna show you how to make real-time hair for games. And we're gonna be doing this by using Maya to model, Fibershop to texture, and Mama set to render. I'm also gonna release a future video where we're gonna render the hair in Unreal Engine. And for this free course we're gonna be creating the ponytail that you saw in the beginning, but here are also some other hairstyles that I've done. And I also have a link down in the description to my Discord, and here you can share any work that you're doing on the course or you can ask any questions if you're running into problems and you're stuck or you can just share some finished hair so yeah if you think that's nice the discord links down in the description and this video isn't the whole course it's just gonna be like a short video where I explain what we're gonna be doing in this course because the real course is gonna be really really long as it's 40 hours of material but i'm gonna try to edit this down in as little as i can without losing any of the information that i want to give you guys and i'll start uploading that in a few days from now so this can just be a short video for the guys that don't want to watch hours and hours of a video or if you just want to have a quick reminder after you finish the whole course The first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna collect a bunch of reference images. You also wanna make sure to collect some 3D reference images. And break down your hair to make a planning on how we're gonna create it. So one of the most easiest way to make hair is to break it all down in separate layers like breakup, cover, fly away, base. I'm gonna show you a bit in 3D what I mean by that exactly. So for this hairstyle, I ended up with nine different layers where the hairs build up from. So let's go ahead and disable those. And this is gonna be our first layer. This is gonna be our base layer. And the purpose of the base layer is just to cover the scalp and you can see it's just an ugly layer. Then I have the breakup. This is just gonna cover the base layer, so the base layer gets broken up and we have some more detail. So you can see how it's adding detail. And it's gonna push the hairline forward a bit. Then we have a third layer, this is gonna be our fill layer. It's just gonna add some volume and break the flow up. And the flow is just and what direction the hair is going so you can see it's going this direction here then with this we change the flow a bit i'm gonna do one more layer where i break the flow a bit more again then we have a hairline layer these are just gonna create some hairs at the hairline it's some nice looking depth to them then we have a transition layer that's gonna transition the hairs into the skull. Then we have some flyaway hairs that is gonna add some breakup to the silhouette. And it's also gonna fill up the, the hair in general a bit here, as you can see. Then we have one of my favorite layers, this is gonna be the baby hairs. This is just gonna give a lot of detail to our hairstyle, as you can see. And then we have one more layer, the individuals. These are gonna be just single stranded hairs. This is gonna give a lot of detail to our hair. Yeah, and that way we can break the hair up in little bite-sized layers. So we don't get overwhelmed and we can finish our hair by combining all the layers together. So the first step is gonna be to generate our hair textures. There are many different ways of doing this, but my favorite is to use a program called Fibershop, as it's just the fastest and easiest way to do it. And all the software and plugins that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna link it down all in the description. So if you wanna find it, it's right there. I used to generate my textures with XGen before, but using Fibershop it's just a lot easier to make edits on the fly and that's why I prefer it. 
but you can follow along with this course with any program that you want or any way of creating textures. And I do also need to say that this video is not meant to be the course of creating real-time hair. It's just gonna be like an, uh, a quick overview on how to do it in like a 13 minute video or however long this video is. Because all the recordings it's 40 hours in total. And I'm gonna go ahead and edit this all together in pretty long parts. Where I don't skip any parts and I explain everything that I'm doing. And I know that some people don't like to sit down and watch like an uh, 8 hour tutorial. So first I'm gonna do this quick video and just kinda summarize and show you how to do it in general. And then following up, I'm gonna be uploading some bigger tutorials that are gonna be really long and informative on how to actually do everything step by step. So what you're seeing right here is a plugin for laying out haircuts inside Maya. And a custom plugin that I made myself to assign different materials and to export the hair. Again, all the links are gonna be in the description. So normally the way that making real-time hair works is that we have a texture, and then we unwrap a plane, and then we move around the geometry to get hair cards. But with this plugin, you're gonna have a curve, and this curve's gonna have a geometry strip, assigned to it that's gonna be unwrapped to your texture and then we can move along the curve to lay down the hair cuts this is just gonna be a little bit less destructive faster and easier so i think the most obvious question should be why do you have a red and green hair that's because i don't care how it looks inside my hair i'm using it as a color code so you can clearly see one hair cut from the other hair cut because if we make them all the same color, they're gonna blend in together. And they cannot see any intersections. And those are bad. That's what you wanna try to avoid. And to actually see how the hair is looking, we're gonna be exporting it to Marmoset. And I'm just gonna spend some time laying down the base cards. And if you remember from the breakdown part, the base cards are just gonna be really thick cards with almost no transparency just to cover the scalp, so we cannot see the skin poking through. And we wanna decide on the flow right now, because the base cards are gonna guide the other cards on top. So you wanna hide the skin, and you wanna get your flow in there. And again, once we have something that we kinda like, we can export it out to Mama Set, and we can see how it looks when everything has the same material, we can work on the shading here. So the way I like to work is I like to do it layer by layer. Some people prefer to make all the textures for all the layers in one go. But I prefer to make a base texture. Now once I have that one I'm gonna lay down the, the base cards. And then after that I come back to my fiber shop. And I'm gonna make some new textures for the next layer. Which is gonna be the breakup layer. For the breakup textures, you pretty much have the same texture, but it's gonna be a little bit thinner and less dense. So we can actually see the base texture popping through the breakup card. And for the breakup layer, I'm also gonna use multiple textures. Because if we just use the same texture for every single card, that's gonna look pretty repetitive. For the base layer, we don't need a lot of variation because it's gonna be covered up. And once we have some textures for the breakup, and remember, they don't need to be perfect. I just want to have something that I can work with. And then when I put them down, I can always come back and edit them. But then I'm gonna go back inside Maya. I'm gonna start laying some cards on top of the base cards. These are gonna be your breakup cards. And these cards are also gonna have different colors again. And this just so I can separate them easily. And I can spot any intersections because I want to avoid intersections and an intersection is where like one piece of geometry is clipping through the other piece of geometry and once we have something that we like for the base and the breakup layer it's also important to go ahead and edit that geometry we need to clean it up we need to make the segments match a bit and fix any intersections 
And we can start off by trying to get rid of intersections by manipulating the curves. That's what I'm trying to do here. But we also have the ability to make the curve geometry editable. So we can just poly model to clean it up. That's what I'm gonna do here. So here I'm just going in by hand. I'm cleaning up that topology. That's gonna be the worst part of creating hair. But we don't need to do this for all the layers. I just wanna make sure that the base layer is really nice and clean. Because the base layer doesn't have a lot of transparency. And the less transparency you have, the more visible the intersections are gonna be. I also like to bring my hair inside Photoshop from time to time. Just to kind of paint on it and analyze and compare the hair. This is important for like the hairline and just kind of planning everything out. So here you can see I'm kind of planning out how big I want the ponytail to be. Because we also gonna need to put that in about now. So for the ponytail we're gonna need to use a little bit of a different technique. As it's like floating hair. The other hair that we made so far didn't have any volume. It was just tied to the head. So I'm just gonna kinda go in and explain the theory about creating floating hair. But the technique is pretty similar. We're just gonna come in and we're gonna do layers like we did the breakup and the base layer. But this time we wanna take into consideration that we need to create volume. So just like we did at the other part of the hair, we're gonna start out with some base cards. I'm gonna color code it because I wanna make sure that I have no intersections. And now because we have floating hair and it's not tied to the scalp, we're gonna have a lot of open spaces that we're gonna need to stick cards in between to cover them. But you can see just as before, we're doing the base layer and then we're gonna cover those cards with the breakup layer. And we're gonna follow the flow that we created with the base cards. This layer is just gonna break up the shape a little bit and it's gonna bring some detail. And once we lay down a few layers, I'm also gonna talk about this new technique. It's called hair clumps. This is gonna be a more three-dimensional looking haircut. And all this, it's just we're taking our haircuts, we're putting multiple together to make the haircut work from multiple angles. So these are gonna be great to create dimension in your hair and a 3D effect. And now we have all these haircuts. We're gonna bind them to a new curve. So you just wanna select all your hair cards and then we click bind. Now we're able to manipulate all those hair cards that create a nice clump together just using one curve. You do want to change the thickness on these. After binding them, for some reason, they double the thickness. So after you binded your hair clump to one curve, we can start laying them down again, just like a regular hair cut. These clumps are going to give a lot of volume and three-dimensionality to wherever you place them. And we're also going to be making smaller clumps. These are just going to be used at the hairline. This is going to give a nice effect to the hairline, where it looks nice and full. And that we have some see-through, while it works from all the angles. Because when you have a regular haircut, it's only going to work when you view at it from the front on. If you look at it from the side, you're just going to see the plane. This is also the part where we're going to look a bit at the randomization tools of the plugin, which are really great. We can select a bunch of curves. And then we can randomize the position of the CV points and thickness and whatever. This is going to be a really fast and easy way to bring more variation to our hair. So here you can see that I'm taking some hair clumps. I'm going to make some variation to them. So I'm just going to duplicate them like 8 to 10 times or whatever. Select all the duplicates and just randomize the properties. And then we can save whichever clump we like. And the ones that we don't like, we can delete. And just by creating this variation of the clumps that are using the same texture, we can bring some variation in the hairstyle so it looks less repetitive while we're just reusing the same texture. 
Also gonna use some little clumps to make the baby hairs. This is a really important layer if you ask me. Cause this like the outside of your hair. This gonna have a lot of contrast against the skin. This gonna be one of the most noticeable layers that people actually look at. So we're gonna be spending a lot of time just getting this layer right. I also want to tell you that even though we're working with these curves, we can still use modifiers like the lattice. And instead of applying it to the geometry, we're just gonna modify the curves. So we can just make a bunch of curves, like maybe one or two or three, and we can just take all those, and we can move them all together using the lattice. This is gonna be a really handy way to edit a lot of your work really fast. And you can see how first we're creating the main part, then we're working on the ponytail, then on the baby hairs, and now I'm back at the ponytail. It's important to not finish one whole part before working a bit on the others. Like I want to do a few layers on one part, and then move over to a new part and do a few layers there, and slowly build the hair up all together, so you can get a general idea of how everything's coming together. Let's say I spend a lot of time on the ponytail and then once I spend more time on the main part I see that it's not really working well together. So I'm just trying to put the, the base and the breakup for one part then I'll do the same for a different part, the base and the breakup for the ponytail. And to create the color texture I don't like to do it inside Fibershop because I think the tools for the color are really limited. I'm gonna show you how we get a fiber shop texture inside Photoshop. Now we can set it up in a way where we can update our texture just in one click. Now we can have multiple textures updated in one click. Because for example, we're using two textures. We're using a color for the main part and a color for the ponytail. Because I want the ponytail, I want the tips of the hair to be lightened. So we're gonna set it up with actions inside Photoshop. So we just gotta do it once, all the saving and the editing, and then we can just click the action, it will prepare everything for us. There you can see a little example of what it's gonna look like for a bit. You can see how the tips of the hair at the ponytail are lightened. And I think this gives a really nice effect. And just because we're using the curve plugin, it doesn't mean that we cannot come in with planes and model out some hair as well. Sometimes this is a better approach. This is what we're gonna be doing for the baby hairs. And this way we can get really nice curvature without any festing, without making the poly count really really high. Because now the curvature is just gonna come from the actual texture. And that's gonna look a bit like this. We're just gonna be placing some geometry clumps down. I'm also going to be spending quite a lot of time on the transition cards as I think this is a really important area because this is going to blend in the hair nicely with the skin. If you just have a really thick looking hair next to the skin it's going to look really fake. We want really soft and fuzzy hairs for the transition. Another way of doing this is to go on the albedo map and to have some hairs painted on there. But I prefer to do it with little transition cards, so we can change the hair color all in the shade, without having to edit any of the albedo stuff or whatever. And we haven't used any X-Gen stuff so far, because we've been using Fibershop for the textures. But all the way at the end, we're also going to be using some X-Gen. This is going to be used to generate some hair cards. These hair cuts are gonna be really thin and they're just gonna have one single hair on them. And this is gonna create a lot of nice details really fast and easy. And we're gonna be having a lot of control over them. And after we have our X-Gen generated curves, we can take those curves and we can apply hair cuts to them with the plugin. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how you do it in the upcoming videos. But this is going to be one of the last parts of the course. 
the first parts are gonna be like the bass, the break up, the fly away, the ponytail. I'm gonna try to break each part up by what layer we're working on. And then all the way at the end, we're gonna be having a part for X gen generation. And once the whole course is over, I'm also gonna talk a bit about how you can make modular hair. Now you can break your hair up in different parts. So you can create multiple hairstyles from a few hairstyles. And yeah, that's all. That's how we're gonna be creating this hairstyle in Maya. And don't worry, when the next parts will come up, we're gonna take every step really slow and I'm gonna explain everything that I'm doing. And to all the way at the end, I'm also gonna do an extra video for Unreal Engine. How we can get our hair inside Unreal Engine. Now we can create a custom shader to change the color, the intensity of normals, to change how much of the tips should be colored and what color it should be. We're gonna be doing a lot of cool stuff in Unreal. But I wanna focus the main part on Marmoset as it's easier and all fast they just look better in Marmoset. So yeah, everything that you need, all the softwares, the plugins are all down in the description. And you can expect the first part of the course to be up in a, in a few days. And if you want to support me, I'm also going to put the Marmoset scene bundle over at ArtStation. It's also going to have the textures, the model, the way you can just kind of spin around it inside Marmoset. But I recommend you to wait a few days, see if you like the whole course, and then you can buy it.